Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I was doing these this morning. I was putting the little oak leaves into little, little covers, making a little stamp and writing an explanation of what each one was. And I was listening to a little podcast from, well I was actually listening to several podcasts, but as I was working I was just drinking in the various words and thinking to myself, this is something that I need just to put on the record and to put out there and hopefully it'll give an explanation to many of you who are curious and it will also offer encouragement to many of you who feel a little bit lost in the world and you know what I'm going to talk about because it says it all in the title of this video of this vlog and it's what I call an Irish pagan life because of course I get a lot of emails I get a lot of questions about um, what it is I believe in and what it is I um, What is what is the driving force, I suppose, behind behind my life here? If that makes sense. Anyway, I'm going to walk and talk because sometimes that's the best way to do it. Now you can hear from the chimes out there and the odd little thing blown over that Storm Callum is just finishing off its crazy energy cycle. Let's go Jack. Come on. So we'll go out and have a little walk. When I first came to Bealtaine 14 years ago, it was apparent to me that there were changes going on in my own life. And I mean very profound changes. I was in a way betwixt and between. I didn't really have a sense of direction. I just knew I had to I had to go where I was being called to, and it was I was very much being called to Ireland. Ireland, of course, is the land of my birth and it's also a place where being sparsely populated and property being relatively, relatively easily priced here in the west of Ireland in a way, it was a place that I could consider going back to and being able to afford. And so the story of Bealtaine Cottage began and the Bealtaine Project. And at that point in time, I had no idea why I was doing what I was doing. I just felt absolutely compelled to get some land and plant trees and land that I could protect. So it was important that I had to make that financial commitment to it and actually buy the land and secure it in my name. You can hear all the birds. Lots of birds here during the storm. The storm raged for much of the night. The, the weeks and months and indeed years passed and I found myself moving with ease, inexorably along a path that brought me to where I am now. So it was both a physical path and a spiritual path. And 
I was keen to work with the land and to listen to the land and not to reject anything that I felt. Because feelings, of course, have got more validity than thoughts and words. Because feelings are very deep rooted. Feelings go deep. And in many cases they're inexplicable. And you can't rationalise them. And you can't make sense of them. And they're not something to do with the left brain. Feelings are very flowing and um, part of part of a, a, a journey, part, part of your life's journey, if you will. Um, so I planted and trees grew and lots and lots of things happened. Lots of, well, should we say too many coincidences? And of course I've come now to understand that there's no such thing as coincidences, that it's far more, um, far more deep and, 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 and flowing than that, because coincidences are just kind of little, little dots, little dots on your, on your life. Oh, gosh, that's, that's weird, that's a coincidence. Whereas in fact, when you begin to come away from the notion of coincidences, what you begin to see is what my grandmother, what my grandmother described to me as signs. Look for the signs, Colette, they're all around. And so that's what, that's what I did. I began to put all these events into a picture and from that picture evolved this incredibly complex but very simple to see pattern. And much of my old life began to fall away. And I've described this before, um, and perhaps just in, in sparing terms, but I'll describe it perhaps in a little bit more depth now. Um, I, I had been a chain smoker, and I stopped, ostensibly for practical reasons, because I couldn't afford to chain smoke, but I actually just stopped smoking. Then I became vegetarian. Now I'd kind of dabbled with, you know, not eating meat and eating meat and eating fish, not eating fish. You know, I'd kind of dabbled in and out of it for a lot of my life. But I began to feel very deeply that it was wrong for me me on on my journey because this is what it is this is my individual life journey this is not a template for anyone to use nobody you should never take a template from someone else's life you must live your own journey and you must embrace it so for me it just no longer seemed appropriate in any sense of the word to eat meat. And over the 14 years that's progressed into being plant-based in that I don't uh, eat meat or dairy or any animal products at all. Absolutely no animal products. Um, I've come to value life and life means all the beautiful multi-layers of life and I've come to an acknowledgement that without all the living, breathing forms of life that we are fortunate to have around us, we don't exist. 
So I was thinking about this last night as I went to sleep with the sound of the wind and the, the rain battering down and the whole idea of existing, of existence went through my mind and I just thought, you know, this is important to live with Mother Earth. And again, this is something that I've said many, many times, but I want to reiterate it, that we live with Mother Earth. We don't live on her. We're not parasites. If you live on something, you're a parasite. We live with her. We are her companions, we are her children, we are her carers, we are her midwives, we are so many things to her. And my journey continued, I give up smoking, I give up meat, I give up drink. Um, I no longer felt that drink was of any value. I, I just, for me, it was, it was everything just to be able to get out onto the land, walk with the land, trace paths, um, drink in the beauty of it all, give energy to it, draw energy from it, exchange energy. So smoking or, or any form of kind of drugs, if you like, and drinking just seemed such a waste of time. I, I, what was the point? So all those were given up. And then I went through a stage where, for me, I would call it the dark night of the soul. Because to come away from something that's so deeply embedded in you... Uh, which was my Christian faith and my Catholicism in particular, was so deeply embedded in me um, that those patterns were so hard pressed into my psyche and into my being. And along with those patterns, a lot of fear and also a lot of um, disconnection from Mother Earth. Um, rituals that no longer meant anything to me names and prayers that seemed not to fill my soul, not to feed me. And often when I had these thoughts and I felt maybe I was letting my parents down and letting my grandmother down and you know all those, all those emotional feelings. Often when I felt that, I then felt very calmed by just the notion, just the idea, just the thought that I can go out and walk, walk with Mother Earth on this land. And then when I began to think about what it was that fed me, that fed my, 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 my sense of spirituality, um, that fed me spiritually, I realised it was this. It was simply this. <sighs> and so, come on, Jack. And so, I then began to name her. I began to name this powerful, healing, regenerative force that was feeding my, my need to understand the metaphysical. And I named her Mother Earth. I named her the Goddess. I named her the Great Goddess. But in all her names, she was the Divine Feminine. In all her names, she is the Divine Feminine. 
And the image of the Divine Feminine was so nurturing, was so loving, was so... was so... was so apt to feed my hungry soul that what had been for over 50 years of my life a religion just fell away it fell away it was no longer of any importance on any level whatsoever. Now again, I must stress, this is my life. This is my journey. The one aspect of life that we should all remember and embrace continually is that each one of us is an individual human being having an individual journey and no two journeys are the same and I think because no two journeys are the same I'm very much committed to living on my own and to having that peace where I don't have to make any compromises to anyone Although, of course, relationships are wonderful and I would certainly not denigrate them on any level. But I feel quite fulfilled just living the life that I live. And it's an Irish pagan life. And pagan, of course, is a, is a, a huge sort of umbrella term. Um, for me it means not belonging or not needing to belong to any organised dogmatic religion. Um, I cannot, I cannot um, feed my soul or my spirit with dogma or with... And, and you know dogma is ritual instigated by other people ritual instigated by other people but also beliefs rich um instigated by other people so you know that 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 word dogmatic um you know where you're being told what to believe in and how to believe and how to worship and how to practice i can no longer be within that sphere. So this, what I call an Irish pagan life, is best understood within these images on this video. It is about the softness of living in this little island which is on the very edge of empire which has survived the worst turmoils of empire though invariably of course it's people haven't um, there have over the centuries been hundreds of thousands of Irish men and women who have died in wars and um, who have fought for other countries and who have emigrated and who have died in famine. So there's all that. But still, this little place remains a sacred island for me. That's the best way that I can explain it. That in order to paint that picture of um, this place that the whole notion of, of it being a sacred place is woven into the very fabric of the land but of course 
all land is sacred. And um, for me, um, when I when I use the word earth, earth is a very uh, it's it's almost got healing elements to the very sounds inculcated within that word earth it's soft it's giving it's nurturing and this is where language then becomes important as well because within dogma and religion you have very specific language and um, for me, living an Irish pagan life, it's coming away from dogma. It's, it's understanding that there is no need for dominion. In fact, dominion has brought us to this point where these raging storms are are manifesting all too regularly and Mother Earth Mother Earth seems angry well of course if like me you believe Mother Earth to be a living breathing sentient being which I do which is my experience which is my life's experience and journey then of course she's angry of course she's angry but like all angry parents she's trying to put things right and with these bursts of anger we should we should understand we should realize that we have changed we have changed the climate we certainly have extreme weather events which are more and more frequent but getting back to what this video is about an Irish pagan life I'll tell you a little bit about how I, how I create my own way of practicing and honouring what I believe in. And of course, it's here. It's all of this. It's all of this. So 14 years of permaculture, morphing into goddess permaculture, because of course permaculture is about humankind, and it's about agriculture which is best practice as a way of feeding humankind and providing habitat for humankind. But for me, goddess permaculture is about life, living kind. And living kind means living with kindness and thoughtfulness and embracing life and enjoying, enjoying the beauty of it all and recognising the beauty and rejoicing in the beauty. Little birds are flying about. So, once more the Eltona Cottage has come through the storm and nothing appears to be damaged. 
couple of pots blown over. Lots of leaves down. But not even all the leaves on the trees have been shook off. Now within the year, the 13 moon year, there are celebrations. One of the biggest celebrations for me is coming up on the 31st of this month, which is Samhain. And it will be celebrated outdoors and indoors. There will be the best of food and feasting, the best of drink, there will be a fire outside and very importantly there will be photographs placed all around the cottage in places where people take their food and drink of those who have passed on and who are very close to me. And of course it is what we refer to as the Night of the Thin Veil because it is a time, that time between the passing of the light and going into the dark, which is Samhain. We, we finish summer and we go into winter. It's a time of remembering and it's a time of communicating. So I hope that goes a little way to helping explain, not that I ever need to explain anything, I don't feel compelled to explain anything about myself or my life, I just feel compelled to show you Mother Earth here and all her beauty and all her life, but to put me, Claire O'Neill, into the context of everything that you see here on this channel be it funny or be it sad, be it indoors or outdoors, be it ranting, raving, or just talking quietly. Now I need to get off because I have to go to the post office and post books and calendars and... So blessings to you all! up again.